Hello, you are listening to the Omnitalk Fast Five, brought to you in partnership with the A&M Consumer and Retail Group, Firework, SPS Commerce, and Sezzle. Headline number one, Chris, after covering Walmart Ooh. and Home Depot's earnings last week, yes. we thought, why not send Target a little love this week um, why not? and talk about what they reported. So according to Yahoo Finance, Target saw same-store sales increase by 0.7%, which was higher than Wall Street estimates of a drop of 1.74%. Right, right. Uh, Good decimal reading. Th- thank you. Um, <laughs> I pride myself on my decimal reading. I had a boss one time that was always like, always round it up. Never give me the decimals. I was like, Jesus, all right, dude. Oh, You're gosh. kind of intense, but Yow. that really happened to me, I swear to God. Ugh. All right. Uh, similar to Walmart's results, consumer spending at Target also seemed to shift to essentials like food and away from categories like electronics, home and apparel. Uh, One other item of note at the end of Q4 inventory was 3% lower than in 2021 and particularly in those discretionary categories like electronics, home and apparel. Inventory uh, there was nearly 13% lower than 2021. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts here on on the target earnings real quick? Oh, man. Yeah, this one will probably take pretty quick. But, um, you know, there's a few notes for me. One, I think macro level, I'm sticking to my guns that the earnings reports going forward in the second and third quarters are going to be even worse across yeah. retail. Yeah. Uh, because I read through the earnings report pretty, pretty quickly yesterday, but I did scan it pretty well. And there were a ton of references to increased SG&A for the balance of the year, similar to what we saw from Home Depot. So yeah. that was one takeaway. The second one for me is, uh, and you have to read the earnings reports for this, and it's starting to come out today in the news a little bit, but I love the national rollout of drive-up returns, and yeah, yeah. They're, they're expecting to do it. They said they're going to go national with it by 2023 or during the course of this year, and so I love that. It takes the reverse logistics costs out of the equation, mm-hmm. similar to what curbside pickup does in reducing last mile costs. So yep. I got to think about it. I'm like, kudos to Target for being out in front of this. You don't have to recreate the wheel on solving that problem. Right. Like you can kind of do it with your stores as your asset again with just a slight pivot on something that you're already asking your customers to do. So so I love that. And then my last point I would make would be the inventories to me still seem a little out of whack. Okay, you how co- so? Well, you quoted them above and they seem low to me given inflation relative to 2021. Um, and especially when I think that gross margins are also, as I read, about 500 basis points lower than in 2019. So it tells me that there could be some clearance activity that helped goose the sales number slightly and get sure. the inventories to that level. And I'm also wondering if they're a little low. Um, and so it could still mean some pressure here ahead in the year as you know they start to anniversary inflation in food categories as well. So that was the one thing that stuck out to me. I didn't have enough information to know, but you know, just something that caught my attention. Yeah. What do you think though? I, I love the curbside returns. I figured you did. I hope, however, like my curbside returns experience was not good at Target when oh, I tried, you tried it. it. Yeah, yeah, I tried this back like it was, you know, in December when they were just piloting it at a few stores. That's right, it wasn't even video it. shoot worthy, right? No, it couldn't was, even shoot it. It was very much not. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's still a lot of logistics that to hear that they're rolling it out to every store, like that mm-hmm. they're rolling it out, you know, as much as they are mm-hmm. is is somewhat concerning to mm-hmm. me because I again, like you really want people mm-hmm. to nail that experience and it was not the same What experience. were some of the issues? Uh, well, like one or two. Well, for example, the uh, the woman bringing the I did a return and I did a pickup order. Oh, in the right, same, the same thing. transaction. She brought out my item, but then she did not have a printer. She needed a uh, printer to print a receipt for me, which seems seemed ridiculous. Yeah. But I ended up waiting forty five minutes Oof. in the car and had Little. to go in and then figure out like how to do my return. Oh, in. Man. So it was that's rough. It was still, it still needed a lot stages, of work. Though, early maybe stages, though, Early stages, for sure. Maybe they some of those kinks out, yeah. Hoping that they do, though, because I think that's going to be important. I think the, you know, they alluded to, again, that they're building more sortation centers to get closer to the customers. But, Chris, my real disappointment yeah. here is yeah. we're still not hearing about any other, like, tech R&D that's happening at Target. Like, I feel yeah. like we, if you compare it to Amazon, to Walmart, like, there just doesn't feel like there's a lot of experimentation going. It's still focusing on like building new brands, and they, you know, Target they did hit knows the what build the brand things again. Like they, like, they hit the. What are you yeah. gonna do with ten new brands? Like what about? Right. I just I I I think you're right. Where it's like right. the the earnings reports are gonna continue right. to come in and not look great for the next two quarters. But then Target, like, where is the conversation? Like I want PR from Target coming out. Like we're piloting this thing or we're testing this thing. Like. 
there's no like innovation happening in the shopping yeah. experience outside of like the curbside returns, which is a big deal. But I just I still feel like there's something missing for me. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the 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 part of me though is that that's Target, right? Target, that's the Minnesota roots. I know, like, it's but like, it's just we're gonna go with what brung us. We're just gonna do it a little bit better each and every day. We're I, not gonna step out and be completely innovative and and i worry you know, though on, on i the worry technology about technology side of things you i worry about it i though. worry yeah. about the future of the brand for that reason it's just it's it's concerning but yeah let's but they're still on. they're still doing it from a very large position of strength that's the one point Correct. i would add that goes in their favor